So let's go on. So today it will be an uh, introduction to CFD because CFD is a very large area and we'll see uh, the following points. What are the main analysis issues in uh, fluid analysis? Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the work environment, uh, the pre-post functions in Midas and FX. We'll talk about the future development uh, of CFD and also the new feature we added this year in Midas CFD and uh, I will show you also some uh, example of uh, oh, now we'll talk about the main analysis issues so what are the kind of problem you can analysis you can analyze in NFX uh, and in CFD in general uh, as well so first of all you have the electric and electronic device uh, you have the heating device, the fluid machinery. Uh, you have also the marine uh, industry, the offshore uh, structures, uh, the automotive, the aeronautics. Uh, you can also consider the plants because you can analyze the fluid uh, going into the pipes, for example. Uh, and construction area, you have flow around buildings, for example. So these are all the kind of application that you can uh, perform in NFX. So we'll go a bit more in detail on uh, what are the type of analysis that you can uh, you can do. So first of all, uh, CFD is very useful to evaluate the performance of the product, uh, for example, which is absorbing or emitting gas or liquid uh, flowing inside. So you have three examples here, the blower, uh, the butterfly valve, the reactors, uh, all these uh, can be analyzed in CFD. Uh, CFD is also useful to investigate the performance of the products, uh, heating, cooling, due to the surrounding gas and liquid. And you can also evaluate what is the heat stress on, the, on your model. So you have a few examples, uh, mainly in the electronic area like the, the cards, the board, the cooling of the PC board, the LED uh, models, all these models. So you could analyze it in structural analysis as well, but if you want to analyze natural convection, for example, uh, you'll need to analyze what is the distribution of fluid around and what is the influence uh, along with the time, what is the, the cooling time, what is the uh, in influence on the environment around, so this is why you need CFD in some cases. Now you have also the calculation of the gas or liquid flow inside a building or a facility. It can be parking, for example. Uh, so you can imagine the, the fan and then the, the cooling of the air. Um, you have for the marine industry the in investigation of the wave behavior. Uh, if you consider the free water surface effect, for example, um, or maybe if you want to evaluate what is the the load, uh, the pressure of the the wave on your boat, uh, what is the behavior of the boat on the wave, all that can be uh, analyzed in CFD as well. Then, um, when you want to understand the behavior of the gas or liquid which is flowing outside the product, and then if you want to calculate the fluid force on the surface of the product, CFD is also useful. So, uh, you have some few examples here, the flow around the car, um, the wind tunnel, for example, this is the kind of example, uh, the flow around the wind turbine, or uh, around the wing, and then uh, you can explore the pressure result around to apply it on the structure uh, as well to make kind of coupled analysis CFD and structure. Um, CFD is useful to evaluate the durability of a product where you have some gas and liquid flowing inside so it can be uh, to evaluate the strengths of a product uh, like a blower, a valve, or oh, maybe uh, an oil tank, like uh, I have, this is an example of sloshing analysis, so you, 
to investigate the movement of the liquid inside the tank. Okay, now let's talk a bit about uh, the work environment and what uh, you can do in uh, Midas and FX in CFD. So first of all, like um, the structural uh, uh, NFX, it is the same uh, work environment. So you won't be lost in the in the comment if you are already an NFX user because it's the same environment. So you have two modes, designer mode and analysis mode. So designer mode is uh, for the very simple analysis when you just want to import your CAD model and perform quickly uh, an analysis on it. Uh, analysis mode is uh, when you want to do more complex analysis uh, to consider several types of uh, elements maybe or uh, you have much more option. Now um, here you have the what we have right now in NFX CFV. Uh, we provide 14 turbulence model to investigate the turbulence, uh, heat convection in fluid and also uh, between fluid and solid so you can investigate the heat transfer uh, in CFV. You have also the free water surface uh, to investigate the boats, uh, the wave behavior. Uh, you have diffusion and advection of uh, some chemical species. So if you want to put some uh, chemical component inside a tank, for example, and see uh, maybe with uh, uh, something rotating inside, and you want to see how what is the uh, what is the distribution of the the, the chemical species can use that um, and then all the uh, kind of analysis that I'll talk a bit more in details after. Um, it's the same environment so you can import as well all the type of CAD uh, file that you have so if you're using CAD here or UniGraphics or SolidWorks or ProE or uh, maybe Autodesk you can import your model directly then the workflow is quite simple and I'll show you an example of it uh, a bit uh, later on. Uh, you have first to import your CAM model, then you can create the fluid volume uh, in NFX directly. You can assign the boundary condition of course and the material properties, the fluid material that you're using. Then you mesh it and you get the results and then you can generate the reports uh, eventually in uh, MS Word format or in this new uh, 3D PDF format. Uh, you have diverse post-processing graphics to uh, evaluate the, the contour, the flow line, um, the ethogram. Okay, we'll talk briefly about the pre-post. Uh, so as I talked about, you can import a CAN model, you can generate the fluid, and then you have your uh, model for analysis. You can eventually use the model simplification tools uh, to modify or to simplify the model because it's really useful, in, especially in CFD, because when you have a very complex model, you need to simplify it a maximum in order to be able to do accurate analysis. Uh, we have also some database materials for CFD. Um, we have CPU parallel meshing for um, to mesh your parts at the same time and different uh, meshes. Mesh quality check and remeshing. So uh, especially for CFD, the mesh quality is very very important. So uh, you need to check the aspect ratio, the skew angle, uh, sometimes the warpage or the, the Jacobian ratio. So you can do that can set your own uh, threshold and check where are the wrong mesh and then you can remesh it uh, accordingly. And then you have also what I call indirect fluid structure interaction. So you can import uh, the results you get in CFD to apply on your structural model. So for example, uh, you get the pressure on a solid and you want to apply it on the CAD model, on the structural model to, to get what is the deformation or the stress due to the fluid. So it is not fully coupled. Uh, I mean it's not done at the same time, but you can just do the CFD and at the end 
you export the pressure on your model and you apply it again on the structural model. So it's uh, one after another. Then we have also uh, a lot of verification uh, material uh, about all the cases, uh, so to be sure you get the accurate results. So all that is provided with uh, the software. And we have a lot of case study as well, so like this one, which is vortex detection in the pump sump. So uh, if you look at uh, this, so the results were really, really matching with uh, what we got in the theory. And so we do a lot of uh, benchmark like that to, to check that we get the accurate result. Okay, now um, I'll show you an example because it's always better to see how it works uh, to understand a bit uh, better about uh, what you can do with it and what, how you can apply it to your own product. So I'll open my Descent FX. Okay, here it is. Okay, and then I will just open a new project. I choose 3D and I will use the meta unit. Uh, what is useful as well is that you can change the unit at any time during the analysis. So uh, if you want to change to millimeter, it's uh, possible. And what I will show you is uh, this example, the internal flow analysis. So it's a very simple model, but it will show you how you can go quickly on CFD to investigate the flow around the model. So uh, the problem description is uh, like that. You have 25 water uh, inlet at one meter per second. Then you see that inside the tube you have an obstacle, uh, so of the cylindrical shape. So you want to know what is the impact uh, of this object on the fluid. So and then what is the pressure of the fluid on this object? Uh, what kind of stress it will cause on it. So um, it's kind of basic, let's say, uh, CFD analysis that you could perform on your product to verify the durability and uh, etc. Okay, so first of all, let's import the CAN model. So here it is. And as you can check in the walk tree, so for the moment I have one part. And this is a structural part, so this is the pipe itself. And what you want to do is create the fluid volume around. So to do that, you have to create first two faces which will close uh, this volume. So uh, you have, in this geometry tab, you have the option about geometry. So I'll use first the make face uh, feature and select the four edges here to make this face. And okay, select here the four edges. Maybe I can hide the guiders because it's uh, a bit disturbing. Okay, now the only thing you have to do is uh, go here and click Make CFD Volume Extraction. Uh, you have to know uh, the size of your model. If you don't know it, you can m measure the distance here using this tool, the Measure Distance tool. Okay, so I'll select my solid. So here I have to enter 0 0.5 for the um, size. And select the tool surfaces. Okay, I will uncheck that so it will not delete my structural model. And I click on OK. So you see that it created a box with the fluid inside. So I don't need the external box, so I will just delete it and in the walk tree I see I have the pipe so I hide it I hide the surface I used and now I only get the fluid volume that I will use to do uh, the simulation so um, now that I have that is to see a bit better what is happening inside I can put it in display it um, in transparent mode so uh, it's called line only, so I will view 
the inner edges, it's uh, better to select a bit when you need uh, to select inside. Um, and now I have to create the material for this analysis. So I go here, material. Uh, here I have already material, but this is a structural material, so I'll delete it and create a fluid material instead. So here I will use a simple wash, uh, fresh water at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, we'll use an incompressible model. So you see here you have the choice. You can use also ideal gas, uh, incompressible ideal gas or barotropic, depending on the type of analysis you're doing. Okay, so here, fresh water. And I have to create a property which is going with this uh, mesh, this fresh water. Okay. And that will be used to assign to the mesh that I will create when I do the meshing a bit later on. Um, now the next step is to assign the boundary condition. So I have a inlet, I have an outlet. So I go in the CFD tab and here you have all the options you need to perform CFD analysis. So first of all, let's go into the inlet. Let's select the inlet face and input the velocity of one meter per second. If I want, I can give it a name. It will be easier to, to view it later on in the analysis case but it's not necessary if you don't want to change the name. Um, for the outlet, I select the outlet face here and I will use the condition uh, value pressure equals zero. So it's a basic uh, condition that uh, we use generally. So the pressure at the outlet will be zero. Then I have to define the wall condition so click on wall. I just select all the faces and I unselect the inlet and the outlet because I already put some boundary condition on it. Uh, you have several wall condition. The no slip wall is the one I will use. So it means that the velocity at the boundary of the wall will be zero in the fluid. And I call it wall. Some, yeah, some engineers tell me they have uh, a delay in the presentation time. So I will try to go a bit slower, maybe. So you can follow. So until now, I added the inlet, outlet, and the wall condition. And I have to go for the meshing. So uh, the meshing, first of all, uh, in CFD, on some parts, I always need more accuracy because there are some parts which are small. And to, do, to achieve this accuracy, I need to control the size of the mesh on these uh, parts. So to do that, I use the size control. Uh, and in this case, I'll select this uh, this part inside, so because I want more accuracy on the small cylinder which is inside. And the mesh size will be 0 0.003. So I can use the preview to be sure the mesh will not be too small. Click on OK. And now I can generate my uh, mesh. So I just go for Auto Solid which is the most simple way. I select my uh, CFD volume. Um, the mesh size is 0 0.0122. Okay. I use the high speed tetra measure and I will check the condition. Okay. It looks good. You can do also a preview to preview the mesh size. And I click on OK. And now I got my see if the volume meshed. So to show you a bit the mesh size around this object, I can for example uh, hide some part of the mesh. So I select some parts. 
and okay, this boundary condition. I'll hide the boundary condition as well. Okay, and now you see that uh, you see what how the internal mesh looks like. So on the boundary of this small uh, cylinder, the mesh is much smaller. So I'll achieve more accuracy on this part. Now, um, the next things to, to do is to check the mesh accuracy because it's always important, as I was telling, to check the mesh quality. So uh, let's check the aspect ratio at uh, 8, apply. And in this case, you see there's no uh, wrong mesh, no poor element, all is perfect. So uh, I can continue my analysis. I will get uh, great results. Now, um, now it's the boundary, everything is set. The last uh, step is to set the analysis case. So in CLD you have the choice between steady state analysis and transient analysis. So there's a big difference between the two. Steady state is faster, but it's only when you want to investigate only uh, the steady state response so at what happens uh, at the end of the analysis. So um, this is the here I will perform transient. So transient analysis is a time domain analysis and you'll be able to investigate what happens from the beginning of the flow until the end. So it's uh, it's take a bit more time and it requires much smaller uh, increment, but uh, it gives you any it gives you the response with the time. So at any uh, at any time of your analysis. So here I give a name to my analysis. You have to check that the mesh set is activated and the inlet outlet and the wall condition is also activated in this window. And now the most important in CFD is the analysis control because it's here that you define all the options related to a uh, solver and what, well, what will give you the convergence of your analysis because one concept very important in CFD is that you don't have always the convergence. Uh, it depends on your model, it depends on your, on your mesh size, on your boundary condition. So you need to set Right, uh, right time increment, especially for transient analysis, it should be small enough. Uh, the right number of mesh, so here that's the thousand steps, number of steps. The total time of analysis will be the number of steps multiplied by the time increment. So here uh, you see it will be 0 0.2 uh, seconds. And, okay, so you have all the parameters like the intermediate output request, uh, the field definition, so I'll go into the field definition window. And here, if you, if you use the turbulence, it's important to define these two options, which is the eddy kinetic energy and the eddy length square. So, um, it, actually, what I'm showing you is a tutorial, so you will find it uh, in a PDF format with the full explanation on my SNFX website on the tutorial section. So you can check how I calculated, for example, this uh, eddy kinetic energy and eddy length scale in this PDF. And you'll have much more explanation about this because uh, it's going fast and uh, you don't have maybe the time to understand everything. But it's uh, very well explained in this tutorial. Now you go into module data and choose the turbulence model. So I will use the two equation KE model. And you see NFX has 14 uh, models for to analyze the turbulence. And now it's OK. I can click on OK, close my analysis case. And what I will do is that I want to know what is the status of the convergence during the analysis. So 
uh, I want to monitor some points in the model, some nodes. So to do that, it's possible to use the results monitoring option. So you can check one node of the model. So here, for example, at the inlet, uh, the velocity is fixed. So I will check the pressure at the inlet to see what is the pressure. And I will put another uh, monitoring point at the outlet where I will check the velocity this time. Because at the outlet, the pressure is always zero due to the boundary condition. And one of the most important points is the inside the small cylinder because uh, this is a point where you'll have a lot of turbulence. So I'll just sel select one node here and I will investigate the pressure. Okay, now are you ready to run the analysis? Solve. Okay, I will change the name. And now you see you have the norm graph which shows you the convergence. So, uh, how you can look at this graph? Well, it's easy. Uh, when the norm is smaller than 0 0.001, it means that your analysis is converging. So you see that the red curve which corresponds to the error of the velocity is decreasing, so it's converging towards here. And the pressure is still a bit high, but it's decreasing as well. And you'll have the convergence when it's inside this area. Now you can check the, the points I monitored, so you can see here, uh, this is the velocity point uh, at the outlet. Uh, so you see that the velocity is almost 1.15, uh, 19 maybe, so it's quite stable. The pressure also uh, tends to, uh, to zero, so this is uh, good news and you see that the graph is converging. So, you don't need to stop the analysis to watch the result. There's a method to look at the result while you are doing the analysis, so it's very, very useful. And I'm always doing that. You right-click here, you open the result file, uh, and you have to open the right file, so here it's uh, an fix. Okay, it's not, I have to find, okay, CFD. CFD results, this one. You click on open and you will be able to view the results which are already calculated during the analysis. So you don't need to stop to, to view the results. So for example, I'll look at the, the pressure, the velocity of this step. Uh, you can use a clipping plane view about what is going inside and so this is the velocity you can add several clipping plane if you want um, I'll use fringe for example so here you see you have a zone uh, of velocity here which is quite high and you can check also the, the flow line for example so if you go here the flow pass so let's check for the last step. And okay, so this is the inlet. So you have just to select the nodes on which you want to know uh, the flow pass, and you will be able to view the flow pass in your model. So around the object here. Uh, after all, if you want to know what is the fluid force on the wall, uh, you can use the function fluid force on the wall here and click on OK. And you'll have a big table with all, for all the steps that you calculated for this step, which is the, the pressure force on uh, X. So P means the pressure force, uh, SP caused the force by, uh, caused by the hydrostatic pressure. Uh, the V force um, means the, the force caused by the viscosity and the T is the total force. 
and of course x, y, z means the different axes. So this is the, the force on the total boundary wall, but if you want to check what is the force on a specific part of your model only, then uh, you can do it. You have to, okay, we'll stop the analysis here because I, I've done analysis steps. So you see it's relatively fast, so it's only took, uh, I don't know, five minutes, and it's calculated 600 steps already. Um, so I was saying, if you want to get the, the pressure force on a specific part of a model, you can use, uh, you can do, you have to separate the wall condition, yeah. So you have the, here I define only one wall condition, but I can define one wall condition and one second wall condition only for the small parts that I want to analyze the force on it, and then I will get the pressure force on this. Uh, again, this is explained in the, in the PDF that you can download on my SNFX website. Okay, now um, the next thing I want to do, which is the purpose of this uh, analysis, is to export the pressure of the fluid uh, and to apply it on a structural model to see what's going on on this. Uh, okay, extract, uh, extract pressure. No, so I uh, yeah I know I forgot to select the nodes where I want to extract the pressure. This is very important. Okay, uh, face and here. So to select better the nodes, you have to activate the fluid volume and to select uh, the faces directly from here. Otherwise, you'll have to select one by one uh, the nodes and. It's not uh, possible, so this is why you have to, to check the geometry and here in the selection tool, check the face. Now I'll click on table, and you get uh, the pressure result at the position of the nodes that uh, you checked. So now what I will do is open the structural model. So uh, here it is. So I already applied uh, the boundary condition on it. So you can see it's very easy. Uh, just a pipe in steel material fixed at the two ends. Uh, so now I want to apply this load on, on this part. So to do that, I'll go into the for, from in the load. And here you have from results. So you create a load from the results. It's an interpolation load, and it's a normal pressure on the 3D element face. Now I just select uh, all the nodes, all the elements of the model. I go back in the table that's here. I select all the, the nodes. And I have to click here and to paste it, and you see that it has been uh, pasted. I can give it a name, pressure, and the interpolation has been done. So uh, now, that, now that I've done that, I just go in the analysis case. I edit the structural. So it's a linear static analysis, and here you see you have the pressure static load that I created, and I drag and drop it in this static load case. So I only have to click on OK and to run. Okay, so here you get the, the result. This is displacement, and this is the form of this stresses. Okay, so now we can uh, go on to the presentation. So this was an uh, example. So as I was telling, this, uh, this is a tutorial to teach you how to use NFX. And this tutorial is available on my SNFX website, so you can check it in detail, how to perform this analysis, and uh, uh, you'll learn a lot of uh, things about uh, CFD. 
Okay, now there's a last part that some of you are waiting. Uh, it's what are the new features that uh, we are adding to the NFXC update this year. So we have a lot, a lot of new features, uh, and some of them are really great. So for the first time, I will present them today. And uh, so NFX ha had uh, four new, let's say, big features, but we'll have also a smaller uh, improvement. So every year we add uh, some features and some new uh, analysis types and uh, whole developers are really working hard on that. So one of them is called the moving reference frame. Uh, talk about that. The first media. Uh, the fan boundary condition. And the GPU parallel computing for CFD. So I'll explain about that. So the first uh, of these is called the MRF, Moving Reference Frame. So when you have some systems like the fluid machinery, uh, the aeronautics, uh, the blades, the, in the naval industry you have also some blades for the ships, uh, industrial uh, machinery equipment, all that where you have rotating uh, equipment, you may need to have this uh, MRF, Moving Reference Frame. So, Generally speaking, you have two methods to investigate the rotation of some uh, object inside the fluid. So the first of them is to really make the mesh rotate and just get the result. Uh, this is possible in an effect, and it's called a sliding mesh, or it's called also sli uh, moving mesh in some time. Uh, so as you can see here, it's uh, rotating, and then you can investigate what is the uh, effect on the flow. So. Uh, but you have also another method, so you can compare it to uh, these two examples. So you, when you have a car, for example, you want to investigate the flow around the car. You have two methods. You can either just go on the road and try to put some sensor on the car and investigate what is the flow around when you drive the car. But it's very difficult because the car is always changing the direction. Uh, the condition of the flow is not the same everywhere. Uh, the, the speed of your car is changing, it's very difficult to get something from that. So what are doing the professional? They just use a wind tunnel to put the car uh, in the tunnel and then they put the flow on the car and then they investigate what is the, what is the, the flow around this car. So this is the same for the MRF. You can either rotate the model or what you can do is apply a related velocity around as if it was rotating but actually your solid is fixed. So this is the method of the MRF. So we made some comparison. Uh, so in the first analysis you have sliding mesh. So it's and the same, uh, same analysis in the, you use the MRF method. For the, so you see the distribution is the same. Uh, uh, so it's gi giving you the same result, but when you use a sliding method, it's use uh, it's take around 220 minutes for the analysis, and MRF methods take 45 minutes. So it's much more faster than uh, what we got. Now the second improvement is uh, the pulse media. So. Um, just wait. If you have some question, okay. If you have some question during the presentation, you can ask. I will answer at the end. Okay. So, post media is used in different types of systems: so catalyst, uh, exhaust system, heat exchanger, uh, perforated plates, or filters. In all these uh, type of model, you use uh, the post media. So, if you are doing the real modeling, let's say. Uh, the only thing you can do is model all the small holes and to see how it's going to fluid inside these holes. But it's very, very difficult. Why? Because the size is too small. So we tried to do that. So this is the same model where we modeled all the small holes. Uh, and it takes 23 million elements. So it's really, really big model. Now if you use the porous media uh, concept, so you have an equation for the pressure, you have a curve, 
differential pressure curve and you model it using this pulse media it only uses 4.5 million elements so it's much uh, better because it will be much faster to analyze and this is some example about the plant equipment so uh, you have some uh, some tube in which you have a porous filter uh, of uh, so it's a big tube, it's a 13.5 meter of length and 6 meter of diameter. And you can investigate the, the flow around and what is going on when the fluid uh, goes through the porous medium. Now another new thing is the fan boundary condition. So uh, when you're doing equipment uh, heating and cooling, uh, you have you have uh, big models like that to investigate. Uh, you can also do room ventilation, for example, so it uses fan as well. So what you want to know is what will, uh, what will be the influence of the fan on the cooling. So it's important to, to model that correctly. And if you use the, the sliding mesh method that I talked uh, before, you'll have to model all the pale you'll have to model the mesh around it and it will make a big model and the second thing is that you need to have the rotation information so the RPM uh, information and the calculation time takes time if you have the mass inlet uh, which is the new feature of the fan and you add that to the, cur uh, the fan curve you just need to know what, what is the mass which is going into your fan and the first thing is that the first analysis is not really adequate for the design stage because it's a very huge model so you cannot model it every time you want to design it so for the design stage what you have is the uh, you have some some sheet like that that is given by the manufacturer of the fan and what you want to analyze is what will be the cooling and you can just directly import the curve that is given by a manufacturer uh, it's called the fan performance curve and uh, then you, you know the system uh, resistance you get the flow rate uh, here and uh, this is some example that we, we did okay now um, the last thing is uh, about the GPU computing so uh, okay the title is not correct it should be GPU computing okay anyway so um, if you want to uh, increase the, the velocity the, the speed of your calculation in CFD uh, you have several ways the first is to use the what's called HPC so high performance computing but it requires a lot of uh, servers it's very expensive and uh, it requests hardware software which is compatible maintenance costs uh, depreciation amortization so it's really expensive but you can use also GPU uh, which is the graphic card of your uh, computer so it's uh, very small it's li it's like a graphic card and so you need to have minimum is uh, Nvidia Tesla so uh, some, some people are asking uh, can I uh, use AMD cards uh, no you cannot because you're reusing the CUDA technology so you have to use NVIDIA and we recommend the Tesla model which is uh, very good for scientific calculation uh, so for example these two models uh, are can be used so this is GPU and this is a CPU so difference you can see here uh, GPU has 448 cores whereas the the CPU has 62 cores so the it's not the same way to 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 function but uh, it will give you high performance increase for a relatively low cost investment uh, now you can get a very good uh, GPU card which is the Titan uh, and from my information it's the, the cheapest you can get it is thousand dollars so it's really not so expensive 
Um, okay, now the fan, okay, the GPU test. So we did some tests with two million uh, elements of uh, heat cooling analysis. So this is the characteristic we use, the Xeon and the Tesla. And this is uh, C CPU Xeon only. And if you use CPU plus GPU, you see that for four cores it increased by five times the the velocity, not the velocity, but the calculation speed. So you'll have five times faster results when you're using CPU plus GPU. Okay, it's uh, almost over. So uh, I'll present at last how you can get more uh, training material if you're interested. So first of all, uh, you go on MidasNFX.com, you go on the tutorial area and you'll get, uh, for, for the moment we have three uh, new CFD tutorials which are very interesting, so you can go, if you already have NFX or if you have the trial or if you're an NFX client, you can download this tutorial to try CFD. Um, then we do regularly some webinars, so as today we'll do CFD. Uh, next week we'll do another session of the CFD webinar. It may be a bit different, so I'll have some, I'll add some uh, things. I may do a different presentation, a different demonstration. So if you're interested to join also, you can also, uh, you're invited for this session as well. And if you don't have it yet, you can download the NFX trial uh, for 30 days on the website directly.